In this lesson, we'll be learning how to calculate the average atomic mass of an element. Although this isn't something we have to do very often in the high school chemistry laboratory, it does help us appreciate where those atomic mass values on the periodic table come from. And it also helps us appreciate how the concept of isotopes, something we learned about in the last lesson, have a huge effect on the modern periodic table. As it turns out, atomic masses are weighted averages which are calculated a little bit differently than a regular average. Now what I mean by that is if you take uh, three tests in a class and you make scores of 50, 60, and 100, well the way that you calculate the average is by adding up the three numbers and then dividing by three, the number of scores you have. So that, that would be 210 divided by three so the average is 70. Now that works because each of those three numbers has the same weight toward the average, which is 33 and a third percent. But how do you average numbers when they don't have the same weight? Well, here's an example of that. Over the course of a school year, a chemistry student earns a 78.2 percent homework average, a 67.4 percent exam average, and gets a 62% on the final exam. According to the syllabus, homework is worth 40% of a student's final grade, exams are worth 50%, and the final exam is worth 10%. Calculate the student's final grade. So there are still three values we're averaging, but each one is not 33 and a third percent. Each one has a different percentage weight. So what we do is we take each of the values that's given to us, so for example, 78.2% is the score for homework overall. So we take that value and we multiply it by the percentage that it represents. So the syllabus says that homework is worth 40%. So we're going to multiply that value by 40%. And the decimal equiv equivalent of that is 0.40. And we do the same thing for the exam value. 67.4% or 67.4 is the student's score on exams and the syllabus says exams are worth 50%. So we multiply that by 0 0.50. And we do the same thing for the final exam. The student got a 62 on the final exam and according to the syllabus the final exam is worth 10%, so that's 0 0.10. So we multiply these values across, and the first product, according to the calculator, is about 31.28, and then the second product is about 33.70, and then the third product is 6.20. We take those three products and add them together to get the final answer. And according to my calculator, the answer is 71.18. So the student's score at the end of the year is 71.18, which under most grading scales would be a passing grade. Now what in the world does this have to do with chemistry? Well let's take a look at the periodic table square for neon or for any element for that matter. The atomic mass, which in this case is 20.180 atomic mass units, is a decimal value. As it turns out, there is no atom of neon that has a mass of 20.180 atomic mass units. That value is an average. It's the average mass of all the atoms of neon in the world. Now you might be wondering, how do you find the average mass of all the neon atoms in the world? Well, you can't take the mass of every neon atom and put them on a teeny tiny scale and add them up and divide by the number of neon atoms in the whole world. That would be impossible. So, we calculate the atomic mass of neon and every element as a weighted average. So, the way we calculate this as a weighted average, well, we have to know the mass of each isotope. We also need to know what percentage of the element's 
atoms are made up by that isotope. So let's work an example. Let's take this example. Magnesium has two isotopes. Magnesium-24 has a mass of 24.00 atomic mass units with 69.50% abundance. And magnesium-25 has a mass of 25.00 atomic mass units with 30.50% abundance. Calculate the average atomic mass of magnesium. So we're going to start by taking the mass, 24.00, atomic mass units and we're going to multiply that by the percentage that that isotope represents. So it says it's 69.50 percent abundance so that would be 0 0.6950 and we're going to do the same thing for the other isotope. It has a mass of 25.00 atomic mass units and we're going to multiply that by its percentage abundance, 30.50%, which is 0 0.3050. And just as a reminder, the way that you convert a percentage to a decimal value is you move the decimal point to the left exactly two places. So 30% is 0 0.30. 10% would be 0 0.10. 7% would be 0 0.07. So be very careful, always convert that the right way. Well, on our calculator, we can multiply these values across. The first product is 16.68, and then the second product is 7.63. And just like in the last problem, I add those two products together, and the answer I get is 24.31. And so that tells us the overall average atomic mass of that element. It's 24.31 atomic mass units. Now we can check our work by going to the periodic table and looking at the square for magnesium. And you'll find that indeed its value is very, very close to 24.31. Let's try another example, this time with scandium. Scandium has two isotopes. Scandium-45 has a mass of 45.01 atomic mass units, 95.20% abundant. And Scandium-44 has a mass of 43.88 atomic mass units. Determine Scandium's atomic mass. Once again, we're going to do the problem the same way, but you might notice that it seems like there's some missing information here. We know the percentage abundance of one of the isotopes but we don't know the percentage abundance of the other isotope. So if we know that an, uh, that an element has two isotopes and we know one of the percents, can we determine the other percentage? Well, we can quite easily. We know that the percents have to add up to 100. For example, if we said that a class has uh, boys and girls and the class is 70% girls, well, we would determine that the class has 30% boys because, you know, you take 100 and subtract 70. So we do the same thing here. We take 100 and we subtract 95.20 and we find that the other isotope has a percentage of about 4.80%. So now we can, we can solve the problem. So we take the first isotope, which was 45.01, and we multiply that by its percentage abundance, 0 0.9520. And we do the same thing for the other isotope. Its mass is 43.88 atomic mass units, and its percentage is 4.80, so that's 0 0.0. 480. Be very careful. Always convert to a decimal by moving to, to the left exactly two places. Students will make simple mistakes by doing that incorrectly. When we multiply across, my first product is about 42.85, and 
and the next one I'm getting is 2.11. So when we add these two values together, the average atomic mass of scandium seems to be about 44.96 atomic mass units. If we compare that to the periodic table square for scandium, we'll find that indeed we are correct. Let's try one more example, uh, one that's a little bit more challenging. This time with sulfur. Sulfur has two main isotopes. Sulfur 34 has an abundance of 4.29 percent and a mass of 33.968 atomic mass units. Find the mass of sulfur 32, the other main isotope of sulfur. So we have two isotopes but we're only told the abundance of one of them. Now, let's take care of the percentage issue here to start with. We have one of the masses and its percents. We don't know the mass of the other isotope and we're not given its percentage either. We know that percentages have to add up to 100 and if we have two isotopes and one is 4.29 percent, that means the other isotope would have to be 100 minus 4.29 or 95.71 percent for sulfur 32. Also, you'll find by reading this question that we're usually asked to determine the average atomic mass of the element, but this time we're not. We're asked to find the mass of one of the isotopes instead. So maybe we need to work backwards to solve this one. Now the periodic table tells us that sulfur has an average atomic mass of 32.065 atomic mass units. So let's set up the problem just like the last one. So if one of our isotopes is 33.968 AMU and its percentage abundance is 4.29 percent. So we'll express that as 0 0.04 and we don't know the mass of the other isotope, so I'm going to leave that as a box. We do know its percentage now since we just calculated that. 95.71 percent, that's 0.9571. And if we look at the total, that's 32.065. That's usually what we've been solving for in the other problems, but this time it gives it to us. So now we have to work backwards. Well, I'm going to solve this like a puzzle. I'm going to solve by uh, multiplying the product across up here at the top. And so the product of those two numbers is 1.457. And to get this value right here, I just need to subtract. So when I subtract 32.065, minus 1.457, I get 30.608. And now to solve for the value in this box over here, I just take 30.608 divided by 0.9571, and the quotient I get here is 31.980 atomic mass units. So that is the mass of sulfur 32 the other main isotope of sulfur. That's the answer. Well, after working these problems, hopefully you now know how to determine the average atomic mass of any element, given some basic isotope abundance data, as well as how to calculate just about any other weighted average.